the Christmas season started and Christmas time also means for me family time. I'm here right now in Switzerland because I am uh, because of the internship, but my family is still in Germany. And in between there's the border. And during the corona situation it isn't really easy to see them. And that triggers an inner restlessness in me and I'm asking myself, can I go home for Christmas without any problems? Or what are the entry measures and quarantine rules until then? Honestly, it is difficult to me to look forward for Christmas. And during the week I often check for updates but there I only led from one link to the next link. And in the end, I'm, I'm even more lost with my question than before. I can't really see hope or I can't really read hope out of it. But still, I have a wish to be home for Christmas with my family. So I wrote down this wish as a prayer and I pinned it on my door and I just pray. And this is a light at the moment for me. Also because I know that we have a God who provides and he gives me hope in this situation. And it doesn't matter what the circumstances are in the end. I know that he will give me a special wonderful Christmas and that is what I believe in. Thank you, Johanna. Give a hand for Johanna and her story. Thank you for sharing your personal story. Welcome this afternoon to ICF, to our first Advent celebration. So great to have you here in the hall, in the all the different halls, at home, online watching. It's great to have you here, everybody of you. I think many of us this afternoon, we can relate to the story of Joanna. On one hand, we are celebrating Christmas. We are going with big steps to the big feast of Christmas. And on the other hand, there's the Corona and all the things that comes with it and it feels a bit heavy. Some people feel really dark. Did you know that many families nowadays, they don't really look forward to Christmas because they are arguing about how to celebrate the Christmas feast. Can we gather together more than 10? No, we shouldn't. And others say, yes, let's do it. Christmas is more important than what the government says. And there is arguing in families. There is arguing about wearing the mask. There are strangers in the streets arguing together. There's aggression. Many, many people are suffering nowadays. And on the other hand, it's Christmas time. And this afternoon, we want to start by celebrating the God who came into darkness. He sent his son, God himself came and became man. I want to ask you to stand up now and go into a worship time because when we have a look today at the beginning of the earth, that's the moment where light was created by God. And when there is darkness in your light this afternoon, I want to tell you there is light also here available this afternoon. And we want to worship a God who says, I love you. I want to bring you into the light. When we sing this afternoon, we're going to sing creation sings. We are the creation of God. And we want to start this first Advent by worshiping God as His creation, by singing, Lord of Lords, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus, that you're here. We worship you. We invite you in our situations. We invite you in our darkest uh, places in our heart and we worship you because we know you are God and you bring light this afternoon in every single life this afternoon. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Who played this symphony in perfect harmony? This must be one whose love is you.
sent the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters and God said let there be light and there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. In a dark state of time, God spoke. And there was where life came to existence. There was where light came into darkness. And I, 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 I love how He said the Spirit was also there. The Spirit was always there, always there. Also in the deepest places of the world, in the depths of the seas, the Spirit was hovering over it and God separate, separated the light from the darkness. This is the creation moment before the creation beginning. 
You can be seated. There's so much power in this time. There's so much power there where darkness is. The light can shine as bright. The light can shine bright. And we want to lean in in this text in uh, Genesis chapter 1, where God created the heavens and the earth. As I read it, so there were darkness. It was a, a dark time. Still were darkness. Still darkness were there. But with God, there's always a but. Like the fog we see here, there's always a but. The Spirit of God was hovering over the darkness, over the seas. And God created the light. God created the light. And in the next uh, time, in the, in the next minutes of, of this message, we want to, we want to go with you um, over these, these three words. We want to see how there is still darkness. Maybe in your lives, in your life, there is still darkness. But with God, there's always a but. And after this but, life is created. Life begins. Light begins. And Michi will would take you in the time where Jesus was on this earth, there was also a dark time. Yeah, thank you, Paul. As you see in the graphics behind me, if there in the beginning there's darkness, but there's the Holy Spirit hovering over the waters, and then there is light. And the same three chapters, they, they keep coming back in our lives and also in the life of Jesus. We want to skip another hundred or a thousands of years, and we go to the life of Jesus. When Jesus was born, it was the time on this earth that was one of the darkest times that the history of mankind ever had. Maybe you didn't realize it, but if you look at the Roman Empire, how they treated people, that was one of the darkest seasons. It's not because the sun was not shining, it was because people with a very dark heart were reigning over the other people. The Roman Empire, they imported people like, like if it was um, um, stuff. They treated uh, people very badly. There were more than three million people who just died in the arenas of the Romans just for fun. People um, had really bad sex. And when there were children, they killed the children after they were born. And we can read that in the street, people um, saw baby um, bones where dogs were eating at baby bones. That's really dark. It's, it's almost shocking. And it is shocking, not almost. In the same time in China, there, was, um, there were people dying from hunger. And there was a war in China and more than 30 million people died in the season when Jesus was born. It was a very dark season of mankind. In Judaism, we know that they were hovering, they were not hovering, they were longing for God to come and relay, um, reveal himself with a new prophet. And it didn't happen. So in Judaism, Judaism there were many gods suddenly. They, they mixed it up with the Greek and the Romans. It was a dark time also in the spiritual atmosphere. But also in this darkness, there was a but. Somewhere in Galilee, an angel visited a teenager girl and he talked to her and we want to read what he told her. He met Mary in Luke chapter 1. It says, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I think we all realize it's a parallel with the beginning of the earth where the Spirit was hovering over the water. It says the Holy Spirit will come over you. There might be, there, may, there will be darkness in our lives, but in Mary's life there was really darkness. But there was the Holy Spirit who came and created a, a mankind in her womb. And that's so fascinating that we have a God who decided to become man to be the answer in our world. There's always a but. I want to read to you how Mary reacted to what God told her. She 
reacted by worshiping. In Luke chapter 1, she says, My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. If you hear that, we realize it was not when Jesus was born, it was when she realized she was pregnant. When she realized that the Holy Spirit would come over her, she already started to worship. And that's what we all should do in our darkness. What is your reaction to darkness in this season in Christmas, when you know maybe you cannot go home for Christmas? There's so many songs about Christmas saying, I'll be home for Christmas, you know, like the, all these uh, country singers, it's always the same line, I'll be home for Christmas, and it will, it's, it's really not easy to go home for Christmas for many people. There's maybe arguing in your family, maybe there's sickness, or you're afraid to be sick. What kind of darkness is in your life, and how do we react to it? Let's be like Mary, let's worship the God who says, I am over you, I will come over you. And even before we see the light coming through in our lives, we can start worshiping. There is two people from our church who want to share with us how they give room to the Holy Spirit so they can realize more and more that there is a but also in their darkness. Let's hear from them. Back in March, when quarantine started, we as ICF Youth Church decided to remain connected. So we started doing online Bible studies. And it was such a blessing for many of us since we started to read scriptures on a regular basis and we just got to know God better. So I just want to encourage you to dive deeply into God's word. It is just so, so worth it. Hi, I'm Jane, and how I practically let light into my life is that I've started to read the Bible out loud to myself. Sometimes I read the same passage over and over again. Sometimes I read chapter after chapter and I almost can't stop. But what's crazy is that when I'm done, I feel how my spirit is refreshed and how this living word is literally changing me from the inside out. Yeah, so good. If we realize that there is an end or there is a but over our darkness, we will see things differently and that's what it's all about. Let's not stay with the darkness, but realize there's a but. There might be disease in your life, but there is the Holy Spirit who will come over you and light will break through. Whatever the darkness is in your light, there is a but. And make room for this Holy Spirit. Maybe you're way to make room for the Holy Spirit is like Mary's way. She worshipped. And this afternoon we want to take a moment and go into this worship song of Mary. It's written in Luke chapter 1. When she realized she was pregnant, it was still dark in her life. She didn't even know whether she would survive it because being pregnant, pregnant without being married at that time, it would mean maybe the people will stone her to death. But she decided to worship God, to worship Him that He will bring the answer in her life. In Luke chapter 1, we will see that she worshipped. And when we see the text in the next moments, make it your worship song. Imagine your own darkness this afternoon. That's the things that are going on in your mind, in your soul. Everything that you're fighting with, looking toward Christmas, looking at the Corona thing and invite Jesus to come in as the butt over the darkness, as the one who will bring out another solution. When we listen to Mary, make it your song and worship over your circumstances this afternoon. So enjoy our Mary singing or reading to us. Mary's song. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. 
He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Wow, what a strong testimony. What a strong move of Mary, worshiping God in the midst of the darkness. And I don't know what is your testimony, what is your story. Maybe you're in dark, maybe you were in the darkness. But when Jesus is coming into our lives, we are able to live in the light. We are able to be the light. We are in this light. And this light is coming into our lives. I remember when I was eight years old, um, I gave my life to Jesus. And since then, I, I'm, I'm living in this light. I'm, I'm, I'm living with this Jesus and, and, and I'm able to let this light more and more be light in, in my life. And maybe your testimony is the same. Maybe your story is, is, is the same or a little bit different. But once we, were, we, were, we weren't in the light, we were in the darkness. This is, this is what the Bible said. We were in the darkness. And now with Jesus, we are in the light. We are living in the light. And this is such a powerful story. It's, it's not just a story of a, of, of a tiny little Jesus baby who is coming on Christmas um, to celebrate a little bit Christmas. No, it's a strong story. It's a story that changed life. It's a story where God is speaking into darkness and light changed. Light begins, be, begins to transform our lives. So this is Christmas. This is the story of Christmas who transforms, who, who is changing. Not only the Jewish people in this time, also the Gentiles, the nations and the world. This story is for everyone who is saying, I need more light in my life. Maybe you are here today and you need life in, in, in your light, uh, light in your life. Maybe in some areas of your life and in John chapter 12, Jesus say, says, I've come into the world as light so that no one who believes in me should stay into darkness. So I'm, I'm a Christian since I'm a child, but I need this light more than ever. So when the world is getting darker and darker today, I need this light in my life more than ever. Since five months, I, I'm, I'm now a dad. I have a family, I, but, but I need this light to, to live my, my fatherhood well. I need this light when I go to work. I need this light when I'm living in my, my, my marriage. I need this light. I need this light in, in spirit, body and soul. And maybe this Christmas time is the time where the light can come into your life and can begin into a new dimension where the light is coming and, 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 and you, 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 you see how the light is getting more and more real into your life. Maybe in your depression, in your fears, in your addiction, in your loneliness, in your sins, in your disease. And we want to to go in the next part of this message into a story where a woman is telling us where light came in her darkness and it changes everything. And after this, we will hear a song uh, who is called Light of the World. And in this song, you have time to, to just ask Jesus, where should I need light in my life? Where should I need more light maybe in my life? Maybe you're a Christian. Where should the light come more and more real in my life? Maybe you never gave your life to Jesus, and maybe this is the moment where you, where you embrace this light, where you invite this light in your life. So first we will see this video. After this, we will hear this song. I want to encourage you to ask yourself, how can this light be more real in my life? Als ich klein war, war ich normal hörend. Ich, 
als ich aber drei bis vier Jahre alt war, da habe ich mein Gehör verloren durch einen Unfall. Damals mein Leben eigentlich, seit ich klein war bis, bis heute, war oft sehr dunkel. Und viel aggressiv. Viel Aggression war auch da. Immer, ich bin in viel Verschlossen, dunkel. Ich war sehr dunkel. verschlossen und ich, ich lebte wie in einer Dunkelheit. Ich möchte gerne Freiheit, aber wohin soll ich gehen? Ich habe mir eigentlich diese Freiheit gewünscht, aber wohin soll ich gehen, um das zu bekommen? Dann bin ich 2009 bin ich pensioniert. Ja, 2009 wurde ich pensioniert. Und seit, seit, Mama gestorben. seit meine Mama gestorben ist, habe ich Kontakt zu Gehörlosen angefangen. Dann ich habe, ich habe Facebook, ich habe Facebook geschaut und da habe ich Claudia gesehen. Und Claudia hat über die Freikirche erzählt, über die Gottesdienste. Ich bin hart, das ist ja reingegangen. Hier. Gekommen. Seit diesem Jahr komme ich hier auch in die Kirche. Und dabei, gerade frei, haben wir zusammen kennengelernt. War sehr schön. Ja, wir haben zusammen das Get Free gemacht und äh, uns da kennengelernt, aber es war auch sehr schön, eben diese befreienden Sachen zu besprechen. Das, das haben wir, lange wir haben sehr lange zusammen über die Get Free-Themen diskutiert. Dann hat mich sehr interessiert. Das hat mich sehr interessiert. Mein Leben. Ja, mein Leben hat sich halt stark verändert. Es stand eine Freiheit. Früher war es sehr schwer und heute bin ich wie befreit. Und dann habe ich mich entschieden, mich taufen zu lassen. Mein Leben hat sich langsam geändert. Also mein Leben hat sich verändert und heute haben mich die Leute gefragt, so, du bist ganz anders geworden. Du bist fröhlich geworden. Du bist fröhlich geworden und du bist gar nicht mehr so aggressiv. Ich danke wirklich Gott, dem Vater, Sohn und dem Heiligen Geist für dieses Licht und diese Freiheit. Und bin ich heute hell geworden und bin ich neu geboren. Ja, und heute ist wirklich Licht in meinem Leben und ich bin von neuem geboren. Ja.
The light of the world will come into our darkness. And I hope you had this moment during that song where you could really invite Jesus to come into the darkest areas in your life that you're having now. And I'm so sure there are people here in that room or in the other rooms we have, maybe watching online, and you have never really opened up your life for Jesus. And I want to invite you to do that right now. Because we can always say, I will do that later or next Christmas, next season, next time God touches my heart. But if he touched your heart today, I want to ask you, don't let the moment pass by you. Take it now, open your heart for Jesus. And I want to pray with a simple prayer with everyone in here, everyone watching. If you already know Jesus, you maybe have an area in your life where you know this is the area where I need Jesus the most for this Christmas. So let us pray with a short prayer. Jesus, thank you that you came into this earth as the light of the world. You were there at the beginning. You were there in the womb of Mariah. And you are here today as the light of the world and as the light of my life. And I open up my heart for you, Jesus. Come into it. Come in every single angle of my heart and fill it up with light. Because I know if there is dark places, there's just a little light needed to light it all up. But when you come into my life, the light of the world, the one who was at the beginning and it will be in the end, it will be different. Everything will be changed. And I give my life to you. I place it in your hands and I want to live with you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow, that is Christmas. God joining us in the world where we live in. There might be darkness, but the Holy Spirit is in our lives and Jesus is the light of the world coming into this earth at Christmas. You know what? When Jesus lived with his disciples, there was the moment before he went back into heaven, he gathered them, them around himself and then he's, he um, said something really interesting to them. Before he said, I have come into the light as the world, uh, the, the world has the light. And now he tells the disciples, you are the light of the world. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So interesting that Jesus, as the light of the world, before, before he goes back to the Father, he points at his disciples and says, I will pass the torch to you. You have the Holy Spirit living in you. And wherever you go, you are the light of the world. Paul, tell us, how can we do that very practically in our lives? Yeah, I love the fact that when God speaks, then so it is. Like in the beginning, He speaks, so it is. And when Jesus is saying, we are the light, then are we the light? Then we are the light. Then we don't need to reproduce, to produce the light by our own. So we are the light. And in this passage also, Jesus is saying, we are like a city on a hill. A city on, on a hill cannot be hidden. And so we are. We are this light. And how can we do this in this time? I think every one of us is, is carrying this Holy Spirit inside of, of, of your life. And, and we can be the light for someone else. And we ask some people from our church also how they are light practical in this season, in this time. Um, and there is the answer. Well, how I love to let the light shine before man is by taking responsibility, for example, at school and doing all those things that nobody wants to do at school. You know, cleaning the blackboard, you know, being the money collector when we have to buy new books, 
And uh, I think that's very important, you know, to live the gospel, you know, not just explain that the gospel, the good news, but also living it out so that they may see the good works. Hi, my name is Lisa and how I bring light into this world is I organize a ladies Christmas where I invite some single friends and we just enjoy the evening, celebrate the season and that especially during this time of the year that no one has to feel alone. And as you can see behind me, the Christmas tree is already ready. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, the Christmas tree is ready. The Christmas tree is ready. <laughs> yeah. Yes, two people of our church who bring practical light in their, in, in the, their where, they, where they are. And maybe you can be light in, in your work, working place. Maybe at school. Maybe you, you can be light to someone who is lonely in this season. I think people are very open in this season of the year. People are very searching and we can bring them the light. Maybe you can help someone with, uh, just with, 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 with your hands. So maybe the Holy Spirit is talking to you to give money to someone. So my next step for, for this time of season is, is I, I said to me, I, I want to, to, to do sp uh, space in my, in my calendar. So when people ask me to have time with me, so I have time because m most time of the year I don't have time. So people are saying, Paul, you never have time. And now in this advanced time, I, I want to, 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 to have space for people that I can be light into his life. So what is yours? What is yours? So ask the Holy Spirit how you can be light in this time of the year. We want to go on by reading together what Jesus was um, reading to his family in the synagogue. He stood up, he took the Bible, he read from Isaiah 61, where there it says, I will be the answer. I'm the one who brings people from darkness into the light. And in the end, he said, that's me. You've always been reading about it, about the prophecy. I am the one who, is, who was prophesied to you. And they were really aggressive. They tried to kill him that moment. And maybe also when we start to shine a light, like the light here in the room, not everyone around you will love it. But you know you're blessed to be a light. And if the Holy Spirit speaks through you, if the Holy Spirit works through you, the light will come through. And we want to go on by blessing ourselves, by reading the same text Jesus was reading in the synagogue. And before I read it, just take a few seconds to imagine who would you go to when Jesus would send you this afternoon to bring the light in this Christmas season. Let's just take a few seconds. Maybe you close your eyes. Jesus, I want to ask you to show me some people, to show me some situations where you put me in, in my family, at my workplace, my neighborhood, the sports where I go to, the university school, wherever I am, you put me in a certain surrounding with people. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to tell me who is the people, who are those people who need the light? Now we want to read in Isaiah 61. And the title is, The Time of Mourning is Over. You are the light who will tell people the time of mourning is over. And when we read it, it's our words this afternoon. Take it as your words and imagine the people God showed you this afternoon. Let us read it out loud behind our masks. Maybe at home you can uh, be more relaxed. You can walk around. You don't have any masks, the lucky ones. But we in the rooms here, we, we will read behind the mask and we read it out loud together to make sure we understand what we're reading and we read it to our souls. Come on, let us start. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor 
and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, instead uh, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. And you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. We want to bless you. Paul, start by blessing us. <laughs> and I bless you that the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Yes. The Spirit of, of the Lord is leading you. Mm in every area of your life. Every time where you maybe deal with darkness, that the Spirit of the Lord is coming more and more real, that the light is becoming more and more real in this Christmas time, in the next days, maybe in your working place, maybe when you are on the road, in the train, in the car, maybe when you're outside, that the Spirit of the Lord is leading you everywhere you're going everywhere you're going the spirit of the lord is showing you where people are, are able to receive this 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 powerful message this powerful mm. message of christmas yeah. Yeah. yeah and i can see that the light that you shine will go on because people who get the light will pass it on to the next ones and there is a chain of light going through your area, through the, peop through the family where you are in, the workplace. And I prophesy over you that you are the one who carries the Holy Spirit and His Spirit cannot be stopped. And we ask you, Jesus, that you will use every single person in here and watching online to bring the light in our surroundings and see how people's lives are changed to see darkness go away and see light breaking through in a way that nobody can stop it. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.